Keller. Corey Huff, this is his uh, second round through on Urban Tellers, and we just love working with Corey. Corey is called Digital Strategist in the program, but he's also an actor, and he performs all over the city, and he was just recently in a Bag and Baggage production of Macbeth. But tonight, he has something very special for us about Dungeons and Dragons. Please welcome Corey Huff to the stage. Now is the winter of our discontent. <laughs> I'm 16 years old, and me and my buddies are piled into uh, Nate's 1992 Buick Grand Prix. And uh, we drop off my buddy Todd at his parents' house, and he goes up and says goodnight to his parents and goes down to his room and waits about five minutes and sneaks out his window and uh, jogs down the hill to where we're waiting in the car with the engine off and the lights out. And he jumps in the car, and we pop the clutch and coast down the hill, get to the bottom of the hill, turn the lights on, hit the engine. We are out of there. And we're going to go cause trouble. A bunch of teenage boys on a Thursday night. <laughs> So we get back to my buddy Nate's house, <clears throat> and we roll up again real quiet, uh, to sneak out the back of his house and go up to the barn, the attic above the barn, and we are going to play Dungeons and Dragons till 3 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> um, I don't know if you've ever been in a room where uh, there's a bunch of teenage boys sitting for hours, but the first thing that you notice is the aroma. <laughs> Teenage boys uh, drinking soda and eating junk food and candy for hours on end. And you know, some teenage boys haven't quite figured out the whole deodorant thing yet, so that's, uh, that's, that's fun. Um, and, and in this room, just to set the stage for you, there, uh, it, it's, the ceiling's kind of low because it's an attic, and so we're kind of all like about here. And uh, the, the lights dim, and there's lava lamps, and there's rock band posters everywhere, and there's uh, you know, fantasy artwork everywhere, because we're a bunch of nerdy, nerdy teenage boys, and this is like our hideout. And um, <laughs> we're, we're going to sit down and play Dungeons and Dragons. And for those of you, I mean, anybody here play Dungeons and Dragons? Probably not very many of you. Oh, OK, a couple of them. Great. Yeah. Um, so essentially, Dungeons and Dragons is uh, a teenage boy's excuse to play for 10. I not look like a little girl. <laughs> what you do when you play Dungeons and Dragons is everybody has everybody has a character, and it could be like a mighty warrior or a wizard or some kind of you know sneaky rogue, something that speaks to your personality, and you and you're gonna be a hero of some sort. You're gonna go save the princess or defend the town or find the secret treasure. And uh, the game is run by uh, uh, one of the one of the players is the dungeon master, and the dungeon master is in this case it was me. And the dungeon master is essentially the person who is uh, willing to do the most homework, willing to make up the stories and make up the monsters and make up all the, all the stuff that everybody's going to do. And uh, even, even though it's a game of pretend and you make up everything that happens, uh, there are, of course, rules, because otherwise it's just playing pretend. So uh, it, it, you have these dice, and you've probably seen them, a little four-sided or, or eight-sided or 20-sided dice, and they have all kinds of different colors, and they're usually sold in, uh, in out-of-the-way shops where uh, people like you all don't go. <laughs> and uh, and so there's these dice everywhere, too, and I'm mixed in amongst all the, the uh, junk food. And uh, we sit down, and, and, and I say, OK, where were we? Oh, that's right. You guys are going to defend the town from the invading giants. And there's this big band of giants that's going to knock down the walls of the town and destroy everybody. What are you guys going to do? And my buddy Todd, who's playing this crazy elven rogue, um, he, he's standing on the wall of the city, and he says, I jump off the wall, and I stab the giant in the chest. And, I, you know, and, and then my other buddy, who's this big, uh, big kid, and he, he's playing this big orc warrior with a spike chain, and he swings the spike chain around the giant's legs, and he pulls him to the ground. And uh, my buddy, who uh, has jumped off the wall with the dagger, is unfortunately, he's rolled the dice very badly. So he gets crushed to the giant's chest as the giant falls to the ground. He's buried under the giant. And my, my other buddy, who's playing this, this silent elven 
ranger come these shooting arrows at the other giants to protect my buddy, and then the other guy who's playing this knight in shining armor comes riding up and he jumps off the horse and he's slashing at the giant and pulling my buddy out of the out from under the giant. This is all like the first hour. So so and, and it goes on like this all night long. Yeah, I'm really nerdy. <laughs> I first started playing Dungeons and Dragons when I was in sixth grade. Some friends, some friends that I met at school said, hey, why don't you come over and, and play Dungeons and Dragons? And I'm like, sure, I, okay. So we go over to their house and they're showing me how to play the game. And I'm like, oh, I gotta call my mom and let her know where I'm at, because that's the rule. So I call my mom and I say, hey mom, I'm over at so-and-so's house and we're gonna play Dungeons and Dragons for a little while. And she says, and there's just a really long pause. <laughs> Okay, are you home by 10? Okay, great. And I can tell in my mom's voice, there's that, that tone that says, uh, I'm not quite sure what's going on here. And my mother had some reason to be concerned because in the, in the Huff family, there's a long tradition of getting in a lot of trouble as teenagers. My mom uh, was a partier when she was a teenager, had me when she was 17. My, biological father was a, an alcoholic by the time he was a teenager, and uh, my stepfather, who my mom later married, was also an alcoholic and used to come home and cause trouble and was really abusive and all that stuff. And The other guys in my life who were supposedly my role models, my, my mom's three brothers, my uncles, were uh, in and out of jail for petty theft and alcohol and drugs. And so I just grew up in this environment where, you know, it, my mom was just kind of expecting me to get in trouble, but she had vowed that my upbringing was gonna be different than the upbringing that she had. So she had all these rules about where I was gonna be and who I was gonna be with, and she knew all the tricks, all the things that teenage boys say to hide what they're really doing. And so she just didn't quite know what to say when I said, hey mom, I'm gonna play Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> so what she discovered, and what I discovered, was that uh, I wasn't really into the whole drugs and partying thing. I was just going to be really nerdy. But these guys that I was playing this game with, they weren't just guys that I played games with. They ended up becoming like my fraternity, my band of brothers. These guys became my very best friends in the whole wide world. And they were really, really good influences in my life. They were so, they came from such different upbringings than me. Uh, my buddy who played the, the big hulking orc warrior, he joined the military, and he actually asked me to be a reference when he joined the military, because he was join, joining like some branch of the military where you need references, because I was his dungeon master, and so he thought that would be a good reference. <laughs> and my other buddy who played the, the ranger, he uh, grew up and, and has this amazing job as a computer programmer, and he's a, a dad and, and a really good husband, and, my best friend in the world, I talked to him about everything. And my other buddy, the, the guy who played the crazy elven uh, rogue who got crushed by the giant, he uh, grew up and, and has this really important construction job and is really responsible, um, which is totally different than he was in high school. <laughs> and uh, the thing was, shortly after my wife and I got married, uh, we were living in this basement apartment and this basement apartment got flooded. The city sewer backed up into our basement apartment and destroyed everything. Um, you know, this was like 10 o'clock in the morning in our apartment. You know, our lives are just disaster, gone. And, um, and I call up my buddy Todd and tell him what happened. And he's like, well, do you want to come stay with us? I've got an unfinished basement that you can stay in. No questions asked. And we stay with him for two or three months. And these guys were just, just my very best friends in the whole world. And this will give you another idea of what's going on. Shortly after, shortly before the flood incident, uh, my great grandmother passed away. And uh, we go to the funeral, and it's very sad, but she was like a million years old, so it's fine. And um, after, the, after the funeral, the lunch is. Um, it came out a lot more callous than it sounded. <laughs> But um, we're at the luncheon, and uh, my aunt comes up to my wife, and she engages in the other great Huff family tradition, which is uh, letting everybody know who you're not speaking to. <laughs> <laughs> Those of you who have families like mine know exactly what I'm talking about. You have a little intra-family rivalry. And uh, 
And so that's going on, and my wife's a little weirded out, and then we sit down uh, to eat, and my uncle comes up, and he sits at the table across from us, and he's, and he's sitting there, and he's, and he's just staring at my wife, and my wife's looking at me, going, what's going on? And my uncle says, I got out of prison so I could come to my grandma's funeral. <laughs> so we leave the funeral, and, and, and my wife's like, whoa. And, and I'm kind of like, whoa, too. But and these, these, these people, I grew up with them, and I know them, and I love them, but I really, really don't understand them. I don't get, I just don't get it. But these guys that I grew up with, they grew up to be, you know, contributing members of society and opened up this, this whole new world to me that was totally different than what I had before. And what I learned is that you go through life and you, and you do whatever you do, and a lot of times life throws you curveballs. Crazy things happen, random stuff happens. But if you have good people around you, if you're that fortunate, things turn out okay. Thank yeah. you.